Hello and welcome to Unit 4, Save Time Communicating. And Unit 4 is actually the longest of all the units that we're going to do here for this Google Certified Educator online course. It's uh, broken up into five different sections. Use Gmail to communicate with your classroom. Organize and search Gmail to save time. Use Hangouts for real-time student communication. Using Google Groups to build better classroom communication. And share your students' work with the community. So I'm going to tell you real quick, if you want to get this PowerPoint, please click the link in the description below. Also, if you want a link to my uh, Google Trainer site from the Google for Education directory, it'll be in the description as well. So let's get to it. All right, so use Gmail to communicate with your classroom community. All right, the power of Gmail. In, uh, in a world of high-speed professional communication, being an email master is really important, right? You'll be able to efficiently prioritize, organize, and deliver information that's uh, very valuable. Gmail can benefit your classroom uh, classroom's lines of communication with flexibility. You can With Gmail, you can compose, organize, and respond to messages from any device. And uh, it's easy to use uh, the translation feature as well, which we'll get into. Now, um, Gmail for prompt multi -com multicultural communication. So, you know, a lot of classrooms today are multicultural, and Gmail makes managing inbox uh, managing inboxes easy by allowing you to label, organize, and archive emails. And the next unit, I'm going to show you how to label, organize, archive all that stuff. Uh, uh, excuse me, not the next unit, the next section. Now, stay connected on the go with the Gmail mobile app. Okay, you can always download that. Um, it allows you to respond uh, anytime, anywhere. Okay, the Gmail mobile app, you can respond anytime, anywhere. With the app, you can add attachments such as photos, files, documents, all from Google Drive. Now, Gmail's message translation, that allows you to write messages in English, and then you can translate them in using Gmail. So remember, Gmail is very good for multicultural communication. So here's an infographic I created of Gmail. Some of the things you can do, you can create tasks. It has a translation feature. You can add attachments from Drive, search efficiently, label, organize, archive. Um, translation feature comes up twice. Um, use uh, Compose, Respond, and Deliver Information. And uh, you can even use it as the mobile app. So your classroom success with Gmail. Build trust with the school community by sending out monthly emails in a variety of different languages to keep families informed. When you communicate to uh, parents in, in their native language, if they have a difficulty speaking English, it really does help build trust and um, help uh, foster uh, better uh, teacher-parent relationships. Your Gmail account for work can be accessed through the mobile app. You can get it through your personal computer, through a tablet, almost you know from any device. Using the Gmail mobile app, you can manage your classroom while on the bus. Right? If you're coaching a game, maybe you use Gmail on the bus and, and you'll get some work done. It's easier and faster to respond to emails using from excuse me from a mobile de device rather than logging into the computer. If you have your, your you know if you have your cell phone and you just want to go in real quick, you can easily delete by swiping and things like that. So you know using the mobile device for email is very very quick. So here's a quick lesson: your Gmail account for work can be accessed on which devices? What did I say? Home computer, smartphone, tablet, school site computer, right? Anything. One benefit to using the translation feature in Gmail is what? It opens up trusted lines of communication with families, right? We talked about multicultural. It, it builds trust with the families and community members. When using the mobile Gmail app, users are able to attach documents directly to any email. Is that true? Absolutely true. The translation feature only allows users to translate messages that are sent directly to them false right the keyword up here is only right it says can only that that's that's false okay now a uh, second section organize and search gmail to save time okay you got to watch this entire video here this video i teach you how to personalize the gmail uh, inbox one second uh, create filters, apply star icons, all of these tasks, okay? They're all from the Google Certified Educator Training. It's embedded in this uh, PowerPoint presentation. It's also found on my YouTube channel. And it's also a part of this playlist. So, let Gmail help you. And teachers make hundreds of decisions each day. Uh, they also feel like they're being pulled in different directions and they've got to meet the needs of this student and this student has an IEP and there's a million things they got to do, right? So to stay organized, group emails by person or topic using labels. So you can quickly find important uh, email. It's, labels are great for organizing your emails, okay? And you can create, uh, uh, you know, labels for special education, for your math class, for personal, for professional development. With labels, it's possible to add more than one message. You can search messages by label and color code these labels for efficient and visual searching. Now, 
here are five, here are five different tasks. Okay, these are quick links here. If you get the PowerPoint, you just click, 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 and it'll take you right to them. Um, they're all part of that video that I showed early on, and I'm going to show you how to do them from some screenshots. Okay, so let's say you want to personalize your Gmail inbox. Here's all you got to do. See where it says inbox here? This little arrow, click that little arrow, and then boom. You can select priority inbox, starred inbox, unread, and porn, all five different types. I'm going to show you a slide where it really um, tells you what each uh, inbox type is, is all about. So you click this here and then select which one you want. So here's the next slide, right? The different types of Gmail inboxes. Priority inbox, if you choose priority, and this is the one they want you to choose, okay? This, this, this is what it's all about here. Um, your inbox is going to be separated into multiple sections where you can choose um, sections you want to show, including important and unread. So that's one type, right? Keep an eye here, important and unread, starred, and everything else. So this is the priority inbox, important and unread, starred, and everything else. Unread first is, you know, a bit just, you know, uh, you choose unread first in your inbox and it has two sections, unread and everything else. Starred puts the starred uh, first and then the second section will be everything else. Default, if you choose default, your inbox will be split up into different tabs. This one I think is really confusing, uh, personally. This is the one you'll start off with, primary, social, promotion, updates. Some people might like it. And um, the last one is important first, okay? It's going to have two sections here. Important, this is down here. You'll have an important section and an everything else section. So the one you want to focus on is priority inbox, though. So. Okay, to so create a filter. So now I'm going to say, how do you create a filter? Um, click the gear and click settings and then click uh, create new folder. So here's your gear, okay? Then click settings and then click create new folder. Excuse me, then create new filter. So one more time. You're going to go to the gear. Remember the gear is, is, is you know, right, always in the top right corner. Orange shows you the settings, and then you click create new filter. And from there, it's up to you to, to choose, you know, enter in the information you want. Now that was a, a create new filter. Now let's say you want to assign a label. Okay, first you want to click more. That's right here. On, this is the left-hand side, okay? This is on the left-hand side of Gmail. So you click more, and then it will expand. So you see how, how, how at first it's more, now more expands, right? Okay, notice it expands. you got all this stuff now, right? Then you just click at the bottom, create new label, okay? And this will, um, you know, it, it's up to you to name the label and, and, you know, add emails in and things like that. So let's say you want to search your Gmail inbox using the same criteria that's used to create filters. Okay, so let's say you want to search Gmail inbox. You're, you're looking for an email from six years ago. Um, here's what here's what you do, right? You just go to your normal search, okay, right in the top here. You just okay, and then there's actually um you know you can't really see it well here. There's actually a drop down arrow. I wish I put that in. There's actually a drop down arrow here, and then this thing's gonna open up, and then you can plug in you know anything. Who's it from? Who is it to? What was the subject? What words does it have? Doesn't have? Does it have an attachment? Does it include chats? All different stuff here. All right. Now let's say you want to star. You want to star something. Okay. You want to star an email. Here's what you do. All you do is you see these little stars down here. All you have to do is put your clicker over the stars and just click it. So the stars. All you do is click it and then it becomes starred. That simple. So any of these emails, you just click star and there you have it. Okay. Gmail notices your complex email habits. Okay, which is uh, which is great. So emails you open, emails that you mark as important, delete, label. It it, it you know it has like an algorithm where it 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 you know sort of has its own brain where it could uh, you know figure out what what is mostly important to you. So if you're always always opening up an email from your principal, they go oh that's important. So it offers a priority inbox, great for schools, right? Priority inbox places conversations most pertinent to productivity in the front. So priority, so prioritizes the important emails. Uh, filter stars and labels they sort out conversations don't forget and um, the power of Google search remember Gmail allows you to find you know um, it, you know Google's Google's known for search right it, it, and you know uh, it, Gmail allows you to find any messages you've ever received you just got to plug it in it, it does Google has always done a good job of search so uh, lesson check you can search Gmail using what criteria sender subject content an attachment okay so again it does a great job of search Gmail right so it's gonna be it's gonna be all of them
When creating a filter in Gmail, one action you can apply to incoming messages is to attach a label. Is that true? Absolutely, right? We said you could attach labels. A benefit to using labels in Gmail is what? What's the benefit? You can apply more than one to any message, right? So it doesn't have to be just one. You could search messages by labels. And you can color code labels to find them more efficiently. Which title below is one of the section titles given in a priority inbox? Okay, priority inbox. We said there was three of them. Okay, do you remember? Start is, okay. Start is the one. All right, so um, use Hangouts for real-time student communication. So we're in the third section. And I'm breezing through this here because I know it's a long section. Excuse me, I know it's a long unit. Let me get a drink of water real quick. Okay, communicate in new ways. You could use Hangouts. And, and Hangouts you could actually use through Gmail, through Google+, through a Chrome extension, or any Android, Android or iOS device. So Hangouts is very easy to get to. Um, using the Hangouts mobile app, teachers could stay on top of conversations by receiving Hangouts. They can easily mute conversations. Okay, I recommend uh, probably downloading it as well. Uh, Hangouts in instant messaging. Okay, can be used in a number of different ways. For example... Um, being able to remind students of upcoming deadlines. It can be used as a back channel during teacher-led instruction. You can post instructional videos. All this happenings within Hangouts Instant Messaging. Okay, Deadlines, post videos. Don't forget there's the, the Hangouts mobile app as well. And you can get to Hangouts through Gmail, Google+, Chrome extension, and Android. Okay, Instant Global Communication. Hangouts allows you to instantly message anyone around the world. And you could hold a live video chat as well. Okay, Hangouts Instant Messaging allows you to maintain a connected classroom because even when you're not in the classroom with them, you can connect with your students using Hangouts. You can instant message them. You could solve problems, right? Students can send a quick message and you can respond in real time. So maybe you, you have a field trip coming up and one of your students goes, oh man, I, 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 for, I forgot them. What do we have to bring for the field trip? And you could just, you know, via a Hangouts, this could happen at 7 p.m. at night, right? And you just respond back to the kid real quick. Okay, start using Hangout Instant Messaging. You can instantly communicate with students and teachers through real-time text messages. That's what instant messaging is. It's just like a text message, right? Now, you can also archive a Hangout. So if you want a message to be hidden from your immediate Hangout windows, um, but you don't want to delete it, right? Archive isn't deleting. It's, it's just, you know, putting it away, kind of, right? Putting it in the back. You can archive that message. Okay, so, so let, let's get down to the brass tacks here, right? To start an instant message conversation from Hangouts, first click the message icon. Here's your message icon. And I'm in Hangouts now. This isn't the Chrome extension. This isn't the mobile app. This is just me going to googlehangouts.com. So I may look different for you. Um, I go to message right here, and then I could type in the name, and then I would click send. Okay? And it's also going to send an invite as, as well. Excuse me. You click uh, send invite. So say I want to message somebody. I go to message, type in the name, send invite. That's simple. Um, notifications. You can mute Hangout notifications if you don't want to be bothered. It's that simple, right? Click on the three dots in the top right of your chat window. Select the mute bell. I'll show you how to do that. You can manage and delete your Hangout history. You could save all your Hangout conversations if you have the history feature enabled. Remember, when you delete a Hangout from your side... It's still visible on the other person. So if you're having a, co a conversation with somebody and you delete the, the, the conversation, it's just deleted on your half. The other person still still has the conversation. It had to be up to them to delete it if they want to. So um, let's see here. First, click the, the gear icon within your message conversation to perform the following tasks. Let's say you want to do these, these things, these tasks right here. You want to turn off notifications, archive, delete conversations, and block people. Here's what you do. You're inside the... Um, you're, you're inside your, your Hangouts, right? And here's your messaging. You go to this little gear icon here, and then this thing pops up. Notifications, archive, delete, block. Instant global communication. Create name, create a name, group Hangouts. You can quickly add people to a conversation by clicking on, on uh, by clicking the icon atop the chat window. It looks like a, like a person with a plus sign. Okay, it okay, means add person. Um... Block users as well. Again, you just go to the gear icon, and then um, I'll go back. Right, if you want to block somebody, so I'm talking here. I would go to this little gear icon, and I would click uh, block. But now we're talking about them adding people to the conversation, right? So here I have a conversation going on. Let's say I I, I want to um, you know add a, you know I want to create a group chat 
and I want to add a person right so you click the add person icon so I start up here with this blue click that first and then I you know I add the person's email right here and then I click create group so this was a conversation that started with just two people right me and uh, this person right here so if I want to add somebody I, I click this this little plus and then I add the new person's name and I click create group and now it's become a group um, use the Hangouts mobile app to create group chat for students. So again, you could use the the the, the mobile app for, um, to create a group for students, and they can discuss social events. Um, you know, instant messaging. You can share a link. That's important to to media. You can hold Hangout instant messaging. Uh, you know, it's an opportunity once a week for students to meet. You know, at, at a designated time, if they need extra support, so you can meet with students. You know, not in person, but you know, online, and support them with their assignments. Okay, what are the benefits to using Hangouts with your students? What are the benefits? Okay, be able to find answers from other students before relying on the teacher. Okay. Students receive real-time feedback even when they're away from the classroom because Hangouts, you know, it, it's the, that's the whole thing, right? You know, real-time communication and, and Hangouts anytime, anywhere. What else? You can monitor the conversation of many groups. Okay. And yeah, you can share announcements and important information with students in the Hangout even after they left the classroom. So maybe they leave the classroom you're like, oh man, I forgot to tell them, bring their permission slips tomorrow. There you go. Use Google Hangouts, get it out to everybody. Um, the mobile Hangouts apps gives the opportunity to mute conversations so that they're not constantly receiving messages. Can you mute on the Hangouts app? What did I say? It's true. Um, Hangouts can be accessed in all of the following ways. How can it be accessed? mobile device oh excuse me it says uh hangouts can be accessed in all of the following ways except so it can be accessed we know right from gmail google plus the chrome extension however um this is not true right it can't be accessed if you don't have internet you need internet last one here for the lesson check when you delete a hangouts conversation in your hangout list the conversation is still visible for any other person involved in the conversation until they also delete that conversation from their hangouts list is that true or false that's yes, true right they have to you know if you delete it from your side it's still visible on the other side for it to be completely you know for it to be completely deleted both parties or all parties in the group have to delete the conversation okay here we go google groups now we're on unit four Excuse me, section four. We're in unit four, that's section four. All right, so if you want to be able to actually do these things, you got to watch this video. You got to be able to, it'll teach you how to create a group, establish group, all, all these tasks, okay? It's all in the video. This is embedded in the PowerPoint. It's also found on my YouTube channel. All right, so foster online discussions. Foster online discussions. Google Groups is a easy to use application. It acts as a discussion board, okay? And a mailing list. So it's a discussion board and a mailing list. Um, it's able to reach uh, large groups of people, more than Gmail's 100-person email limit, right? So Gmail's only 100-person email limit, but Google Groups, you can large, you know, reach large groups of people. Participants in Google Group can create, post, respond to discussions, um, all by web interface, interface and uh, email. It's very similar to, like, Facebook groups, right? You can create custom groups to share weekly information with parents, uh, specific members of your specialized programs or committees. Or you can even, um, or even for each grade level you teach, right? So you can create custom groups for parents, custom groups for grade levels, custom groups for committees. Create all these different custom groups. All right, so sh so be able to complete the following tasks, right? I put, look what I put it. Each of these tasks are, are covered in uh, the previous video. However, these are quick links. So if you just want to know how to do this real quick, click this link here, click this link, click this link. Okay, they all match up. All right. So in case you're, you know taking a test you're confused or something you just boom click right here and it'll take you right to it um, but I'm not gonna do that okay to create a Google group um, get to Google groups by entering groups website so you just go to groups.google.com okay and as soon as you get there you just look how easy it is just create group and, and, and it'll get you started so if you want to create a group just go to Google groups Google, you know groups.google.com or type in Google Groups in you know in, in the Omni box and I'm sure it'll pop right up and you just create group right there bright and red all right so if you want to establish group information right after you click create group all this is gonna pop up here then you pick a group name 
a group email address. You can enter in a group description. You can choose the group type. I'll talk about all different, uh, all four types. It could be an email list, a web form, a Q&A form, or a collaborative inbox. Okay. So here are the remaining tasks, right? So um, first, uh, you know, uh, first click. Let's say you want to uh, manage a group. Okay. While you're here, you can click My Groups. Okay, this is in the upper left-hand corner, and then click Manage. Once you're in Manage, if you want to set permissions, you click on Permissions, and then and then you know posting permission basic permissions if you want to invite members again you click on manage and then you go to invite members and if you want to just uh, you know share an email with the entire group you go to information and then general information to you know um, send an email with the with these I would watch the video you definitely got to watch the video here so I'm just gonna read this one more time for remaining tasks first click my groups okay so it all starts with my groups in the upper left hand corner then it goes with manage so you start with my groups and manage and then you'll have on the left hand side your choice for setting permissions which is right here you'll have your choice for inviting members which is you know right here or to email or share a group you want to go to the blue one information and then general information all right so let's let's keep going all right the four different types of google groups email list okay allows users to post from the web through email this is a mailing list group. This is email list. Web form allows people to interact with the group and, and have engaging interactive discussions, right? Q&A form, it's got extra feature, features, enables to support the experience of asking and answering questions. So if you just want to ask and answer questions, you're going to focus on Q&A form. Collaborative inbox is, uh, is unique, right? Because uh, topics can be assigned to members and treated like tasks where they have to be resolved and assigned. So if you, you know, collaborative inbox, if you want to send, you know, you do this, you do that, you do this, collaborative inbox is the way to go. Question and answer, if you have a lot of question and answer. Email form is like you just want to post, you know, you just want to send out an email blast to a bunch of people. And web form is, is good for discussions, right? If you want to have like, like discussions, like maybe this is Q&A, it's not really discussion, this is assigning tasks, that's not discussions. Web forms, you know, for discussions. Okay, create a Google group. What do, what do we know, right? Um, Google groups make it comfortable for students to participate, right? Some students might be too shy in, in a class, all right? They don't want to speak up, you know, in front of, you know, out loud and physically speak up. So you create a Google group, and then it's easier for them to respond, okay? They're used to responding, you know, online. You can ask thought-provoking questions in a group and have students feed off each other. Uh, this approach creates a, a more accessible and open discussion environment. That's what's good for the classroom with Google, with Google groups, okay? It creates an access, uh, excuse, uh, excuse me, a more accessible and open discussion environment, and it can be used to increase communication between parents and, and you know share resources. So um, here's the task for you: create a group for parents. What do you do? First, you got to go to Google Groups, click that red Create button. Then it's going to give you a bunch of information. Right, you just pick, you know, decide your group's name, choose your group type. Okay, this is here to be web form. And then select uh, anyone can ask, you know, in the basic permission areas. If you want to go public, if you want to um, only invite users. All right, lesson check. Why is creating a, a Google group more effective means than communication by creating a contact group in Gmail? Huh? Why is that? Remember what we said? Remember, right, a Google group has one custom email address, allowing you to, to bypass the 100-person limit of Gmail. Okay, Gmail's a limit of 100 people. Google Groups, no. What are the three levels of basic permission settings? Okay, three levels of basic permission settings. Anyone can ask. Only invited users. And public. You would know this if you watch the video. Okay. When creating a Google Group, select the email list group type, which allows users to interact with the group and uh, which of the following ways. Right, so it's an email list. Okay, obviously it's going to be email. And uh, one way to share your group and increase participation is by inviting members directly through what? Oh, excuse me, let me say that again. One way to share your group and increase participation is by inviting members directly through email. Is that true? Of course, right? You can always you can always just send a direct email to someone. All right, so we, I've been rushing through this thing. I'm going to take a quick second. It's such a 
such a large unit here. We're already on the last section. Share your student students' work with the school community, and uh, this this focuses on sites. Now, this whole unit, the whole idea is to create a kind of create a class website, a website for your classroom. So I would watch this video here. I've I've got uh, about seven different tasks, and um, you, you know. Ultimately, when you take the Google Certified Edu Educator exam, that's what they want you to be able to do, to, to build a class website. Okay, empower your classroom. So let's say you want to communicate to a wider audience, right? That's important because you want to keep the community informed of the success you're having in, in, in your classroom, right? So one way to keep the community informed of all your success is to create a Google site on your classroom, okay? Sites can make students' work authentic and important because now all the work that the students do, it's out there online for their parents to see and everybody to see. So it's more important to the kids. For example, during a design thinking activity, students can develop a Google site and they can promote a new product, okay? Um, what can you do with a Google site? Here you go. You can do announcements, student of the month, class calendar, post PowerPoints, embed videos, show student work, syllabus, field trips, much, much more. Now, you got to be able to do these following tasks, right? This is all part of the previous video, but these are links that take you to like the exact section to create a Google site name, your site, all of these here. And these are your quick links of the seven tasks. Let's keep moving. All right, so to create a Google site, um, here's two ways to do it. You can do it from Drive. If you go to Google Drive, you just click New. It'll take you to Google Sites. Or you can just click on this link right here. It'll take you right to Google Sites, right? But however, notice it says slash new, okay, because we're creating a new Google site. So when you get there, you want to do new Google Sites. Always work with the most updated, uh, with the most updated uh, application. All right, so let's say you want to name your site and change the background, etc., and so forth. So here you go. So enter, uh, simply click the items below to, to, you know, the site document name. Let's say you want to change the site document name. Here it is, right at the top. Let's say, all you got to do is just click. You want to change the site name. Here it is right there. You want to change the page title. Just click right there. And all this happens as soon as you create your site. You want to change the background image. Right there, change image. You want to change the header type. Boom, right there. Okay, you want to change the themes. Themes is top right hand corner. Okay, you want to publish your site. You just at any time click publish. Okay, so it's all right there, all straightforward. Okay, you, you click new site and all this will be here. Again, this is the new Google sites I'm in, the new sites. To create new pages, okay, click pages in the top right. So here you go, those are your pages. So this is if you want to add more pages to your site. You click pages, then you'll click um, new page down here okay to create a new page if you want to add a sub page you click more so here I am here's experiments right let's say I want to create a sub page for experiments I click this this three little dots this vertical ellipse I click this here and then I can add sub these are all sub pages from experiments right so here's some experiments and then you got elephant two place which is a great experiment uh, flame test uh, I used to love doing and uh, titrations are a little boring um, add slash insert items. Okay. So let's say you want to add items here to your uh, Google site. You just see right here. Click insert, right? If you want to add pages, click pages, insert. If you want to add items. And then from there, you can click text box. You can click images. You can embed things. Okay. You get the code to embed it. Um, you could also add calendars, YouTube videos, maps. Check it out. All right here. YouTube, calendars, maps, all you got to do is embed it. You, you click this right here, and it'll take you to YouTube. You click this right here, it'll take you to calendars. Click this right here, it'll take you to maps. So all you got to do is click, one click away. If you want to preview what this site looks like, just click this little eye. That eye right there is the preview icon. Okay, let's say you want to insert, you know, uh, Google, things from your Google Drive, right? Okay, from, from Google Drive, again, you go to insert. And you scroll down. You gotta go. You gotta get it all the way down to the bottom now, right? So, don't forget. You gotta scroll down. Look over here. Okay. You gotta scroll down. And if you see here too, Google Drive is, is you know right here. But if you go down as well, you could see a little bit. Here's Google Docs and all that stuff. So what I'm doing on the next page is I'm just scrolling this thing down. And uh, it goes all the way down to the bottom. And here, take a look. You could just click Docs, Slides, Sheets, Forms, Charts, all that stuff. Click on one of these, it'll take you to all your docs, and you just choose one. Very simple. 
And if you want to go into your drive, if, if it's easy for you to find stuff from drive, you just click from drive. Okay. So if you want to do a, if you want to insert a doc, you could do it from drive, but it's probably easier just to click docs. Okay. Apply your site knowledge. Well, let's apply what we learned, right? Features of Google Sites provide transparency. Okay. You know, um, into any of the activities that you've done with your students, you can put it out there on a Google site, right? You get support from your community because they see all the great things you're doing. And uh, Google Sites allows you to collaborate with other educators. Okay, you can create, uh, you can have collaborators on these sites. You can have several people working on the site at the same time. Maybe you and a co-teacher. You got a special ed teacher and a general ed teacher. You guys work together. Um, as the owner and site creator, you may decide to allow your colleagues to, to edit the site. That's up to you. Okay, customize your Google site. How do you do that? You can add a footer to the site, personal URLs, custom themes, switch between header types, rearrange your pages, view attachments, change site name, sh you know, edit and change sharing permissions. All these different things you can customize your site and make it unique and make it different. Okay, apply your site knowledge. You should be able to insert a document, uh, create new pages, embed a Google Sheet, and share your site with a collaborator. You should be able to do these things. Okay, it's pretty straightforward too. Okay, insert, you know, insert being the top right, create a new page, top right, you go to pages, embed. Once you go to insert, you just click on click on sheets and collaborator. Um, I think I think we go that next. No, all right. Let's go back real quick. A collaborator should be right right at the top by publish. Okay. Maintaining a Google site as a class site is valuable because you can communicate easily with a large audience. Is that true? Uh, yes, right? It's Google Sites is communicating with a large audience. That's what it's about. Users cannot set unique page level permissions for different pages of the site. So can each individual page have its own, you know, a uh, uh, select permissions is that true well it says cannot sorry the way I said it yeah so users cannot so you yeah it, that that's not true right you, you can't do that so uh, let, let me go over this real quick so it says users cannot set unique page level permissions for different pages within a site yes that's true okay you can't do that so you know if, if you set per permissions for a Google site those permissions go for every single page within the site it's not like you know one page the experiment page I can set permissions for somebody named Joe and then on the um, on the syllabus page I can set permissions for somebody else that that's not true where can you find any Google sites you are either an owner or editor where can you find them you can find it in Google drives you can find it on sites.google.com slash new okay which of the following features can you customize in your Google site? Headers, footers, URL, URL addresses, themes, right? This goes back to that slide where I had all those things popping out. Okay, unit four check. Let's finish this up. What are some of the benefits of leveraging Google Groups to communicate? What are the benefits? Google Groups is built for large communication, right? More than, you know, Gmail only goes up to 100. It also has a unique email address that can unify all group members. You can interact via web or email. Remember, we said there's different ones you could, different, um, you know, group types. So it could be web, email, Q&A. And member permissions can be adjusted, right? You can go inside it. If you create a group, you can, you know, control everything. You can have, uh, you know, some allow some people to post and some people you go, you could be in a group, but this guy posts some crazy stuff. Like, I don't want this guy posting. So you take that permission away, lock him down. If you have a student who's a second language learner, parents only speak primary language at home, they need special interventions because they're struggling in your class, you will want to use blank in blank to communicate the, necess uh, the necessary intervention steps with their parents. You want to use what? You want to use translation in Gmail, right? You want to communicate to, to parents that don't speak uh, English, so you're going to use the translation feature found in Gmail. Oh, man, you're expecting an important email from a guest speaker who's considering doing an, an instant messaging, ask me anything, hang out with your students tomorrow. But you have to leave your classroom to fulfill your extracurricular duties on the, on the tennis courts. What is the most efficient action you could take in order to receive an email and confirm the guest speaker's participation in the next day's event, despite being away from your desk? So you're away from your desk. How do you confirm? What's the best way? 
download or activate the Gmail mobile app, right? So you can do it really quickly from your, your smartphone, right? One of the themes in, in the first section here was, you know, use the Gmail mobile app for when you're on the bus and, and, and you know, you're not doing nothing. You're just sitting on the bus board. You're going to the soccer game. Use that app and, and you know, you can respond and things like that. Um, your student, Mary H., is working on overcoming behavior issues. They want to be more successful in the classroom, so you're constantly getting emails from the school's uh, behavior intervention specialists. A lot of problems with those, uh, but we'll keep going. From the student's parents uh, f and uh, from the student's other teachers and uh, the school's psychologist about upcoming meetings and action steps needed to help Mary H. meet your goals, um, what label titles can you make and apply to Gmail filter you uh, for the Gmail filter you created for incoming messages about this student so you can remain organized and find important messages quickly? All right, so that's a big question here. All right, so basically it says what label titles can can you, uh, you can you make for the Gmail filter? Okay, you do one for the for for Mary H. Right, the student. You create one for the the, the parent. And create one for the psychologist. You're not going to do fundraising because it has nothing to do with anything. Thursday, 5.35 p.m., Mary D. sends you an attached uh, agenda for tomorrow's technology integration meeting. And you want to view it before the meeting so that you have ideas and questions ready for the group, right? To efficiently search and find this email, okay, you can search by using what identifiers, okay? This goes to the second section. So remember, if you want to search, you just go in Gmail, that, that top search bar. You click that little down arrow. Um, so what identifiers, okay, are we going to be working with? Attachment, right? Because they sent out an email. Excuse me, they sent out an, an attached agenda. So why not use attachment? Okay, you know who sent it. So you want, from sender, you want to go, okay, Marsha D, right? And you could do time because you know when it was sent, right? 5.35 p.m. So you can get really specific. Um, you've not seen the bottom of your email in weeks because students are constantly reaching out for help on projects or whatever. So while you're excited, your students are engaged, you don't mind answering questions, you have other work that requires your attention. In order to share the responsibility of supporting students in, uh, in their success with your classroom, which of the following actions would you take to increase effective communication? So how do you, so you're, you're busy here, right? And you haven't been able to, to really talk to your students. How do you increase effective communication? Create an instant messaging group and hangouts, right, so your students can help each other out. And you can even jump in there as well. What are some features available in Google Sites new to help you customize the site? You can embed videos. you got page navigation, image uploads, and um, that's it. There's no widgets. All right, so that was Unit 4. I went through it really fast because it's the longest unit. Okay, it's five sections. Um... There's a lot of videos in there. I I, w I, re I really recommend going and watching those those videos. It'll really teach you how, how to do things. Cause I, I did go through this fast, and uh, some of those screenshots, images that, that I that I showed you here, I feel like you really need to to you know to watch the video because I really explain everything too. All right, so I'll see you in um unit. Uh, I'll see you next in unit five. And uh, don't forget, uh, you can click the you can click the links below. You can follow me on Twitter. I think I have a Pinterest down there too. You can follow me. Um. And you can add uh, the PowerPoints down there below.